learners welcome to our environmental science senior secondary course of nis in our previous program we have already discussed about modern agriculture which includes process of processing food feed fiber and agriculture cultivation of the certain plants and raising of domesticated animal so today there is a great demand to promote sustainable agriculture there is lesson 21 concept of sustainable agriculture of module 6 sustainable development i am nilam gupta course coordinator of environmental science welcome to you in this program look at the figure as we know that primitive humans discovered agriculture about 12000 years ago primitive hunters and gatherers moved to place near rivers once humans knew that watering plant is necessary to grow plants look at the left side figure hunting and gathering primitive humans learn to become farmers such human settlements begin farming gradually more humans settled away from rivers and watered their growing crops with water from wells tube wells and other means of withdrawing ground water however result of farming depending largely on rains during monsoon right side figure shows a farmer praying rain god now come to the objective of the program a relate changing human needs with overuse of environment need for enhancing quality of environment define sustainable agriculture and justify its need describe concept and methods of sustainable agriculture explain about organic farming and its benefits describe the methods of preparing vermi compost explain biofertilizer and their use in agriculture explain integrated waste management and gmos and its related issues now come to human needs and overuse environment human population are growing rapidly throughout the world almost half of the population live in densely populated urban areas rural population migrate to urban areas in search of job food housing and a better lifestyle and also impact on agriculture as well as environment now come to the need for enhanced quality of environment this huge population puts a tremendous pressure on resources the high rate of consumption of resources and high waste rate as expansion of cities croplands forest wetland and wild habitat destroy so there is a great need to improve the situation so that humans can enjoy a quality environment we do deserve a healthy environment to survive and lead a good life now come to the advent of modern agriculture after world war 2 food and fiber were raised by new technology thus began modern agriculture use of new machines and implements for agriculture use of fertilizers and pesticides expansion of irrigation facilities resulting in enough food for fast growing population now come to the impact of modern agriculture on environment population increase more food needed more farm used agriculture grow more food but many adverse effects on environment and unemployment of farm laborers come to the impact on environment deforestation to get land for agriculture top soil depletion soil pollution another one ground water contamination polluted water unemployment of farm laborers migrating from villages to cities re- resulting in urbanization and its problems next slide shows different tools and implements and expansion of irrigation facilities now come to the sustainable agriculture so so slogan of last two decades promote not modern agriculture but sustainable agriculture to save the environment for future generations so next question arises what is sustainable agriculture and sustainable agriculture for whom sustainable agriculture or sustainable farming attempts to produce sufficient food exhausting soil fertility and damaging environment it is to be least toxic farmland and least energy intensive in operation and get maintain productivity and profitability 
grow sufficient food and retain soil quality for many subsequent generation to grow food now how does sustainable agriculture achieve so answer is it can be achieved by various ways that is protect and preserve environmental quality use natural resources judiciously decrease dependence on non renewable energy resources provide consumers with affordable high quality food stuff support profitable agriculture production enhance quality of life of farmers and rural population last for many generations now come to the methods of sustainable agriculture that will be mixed cropping or diverse cropping crop rotation multiple cropping while planning these approaches one has to be kept in mind local geography and topography nature and condition of soil so local climate and local inputs and farmers goal now we will discuss objectives of sustainable agriculture cultivation practices to increase biological and economic stability selection of improved varieties to suit the need soil management by proper method of tillage many farmers in india and other developing countries follow the traditional practices of mixed cropping or diverse cropping and crop rotation first we will take mixed cropping or diverse cropping is an old practice in india in this method two or more crops are grown on the same piece of land and at the same time this removes the insecurity of total crop failure when more than one crop is grown at least one will survive if not all if of the two crops grown together one is a long duration crop and other are short duration crop nutrients required by the two crops is different time of maturity is different generally leguminous crop is grown with a main crop so nitrogen gets fixed and there is no need for fertilizer it saves costs other plant for mixed cropping can be polyvarietal cultivation that is several varieties of same crop grown together now next is intercropping different crops that is one is leguminous crop which fixes nitrogen other carbohydrate rich crop which uses soil nitrogen plants maturing at different times are grown together needs different so less inputs needed natural predators control pests so no pesticides needed compared to monoculture yield per hectare much more now what is monoculture it is a cultivation of single crop on large scale which gives large yield but for a short period of time it is expensive as lots of fertilizers and pesticides are needed so not only monoculture is economically unsound but also environmentally harmful next is crop rotation growing different crops in succession regularly in the same field result control insects and diseases increase soil fertility decreases soil erosion monoculture of high yield single crop exhaust totally one certain minerals yield remain utilization this result in nutrient imbalance of the soil and encourages certain pests and diseases sowing a leguminous crop as a rotational crop is very useful because legumes enhance nitrogen level in the soil due to their ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen reduces the need for chemical nitrogen fertilizer thereby cutting the cost and saving the soil from the harmful effects of using high yielding varieties along with the application of large amount of fertilizers pesticides and water it is possible to grow two or sometimes three different crops in succession on the same land within a year is known as multiple cropping this practice can go on for some time but the land cannot maintain high yield in a long run crop rotation takes into amount the factors first 
leguminous crop should be grown after non leguminous crop crop requires less water should be grown after one that requires more water third crops requiring less manure should be sown after one that require more manures important crop patterns of crop rotation as shown in this slide first green gram wheat and moong second round nut wheat and moong third arhar sugar cane wheat and moong fourth paddy wheat and moong mixed cropping when coupled with livestock rearing has many advantages some land area can be used or crop or of grown on one label and steeper slope if pasture and leguminous forage crops are rotated soil quality is enhanced livestock manure make soil fertile in case of rainfall at least livestock provided milk takes marketing of multiple products easy cushions for farmers against price fluctuation farm labor gets utilized more effectively now come to the soil management a healthy soil is a key component of sustainable agriculture that is healthy soil along with water and nutrient produces healthy crop plants that are less susceptible to pests and diseases accordingly soil must be protected and nurtured to ensure long term productivity and stability methods of protection include using cover crops compost reducing tillage conserving soil moisture by dead mulches this increases water hold capacity of the soil significant improvement in crop production has been achieved by using the conventional method of selection and plant breeding now objectives of varietal improvement are development of high yielding varieties of crop plants food crops develop for better and higher nutritional quality like protein quality in pulses baking quality in wheat preserving quality in fruits and vegetables oil quality in oil seed producing plants developmental of crop varieties resistance to disease and pests improving varieties for resistance against heat cold frost drought and water logging now come to the biofertilizer and its uses in agriculture biofertilizers are substitutes for chemical fertilizers such as npk they are used in reduces energy expenditure required to manufacture fertilizers they do not cause pollution microorganisms like bacteria algae and fungi fix atmospheric nitrogen uh, that can be solubilized phosphorus decompose organic material or oxidize sulfur in soil enhance growth and yield of crops improve soil fertility some of the important types of biofertilizers which can be considered for agro based industries are rhizobium azetobacterium azolla blue green algae etc first rhizobium it is a symbiotic bacteria and form root nodules in leguminous plants and live there they can fix atmospheric nitrogen up to 200 kg nitrogen per hectare per year surplus nitrogen remains in soil and enhance soil quality next is azetobacteria these are aerobic fix living nitrogen fixing bacteria grow around roots of cereals and fix nitrogen produce growth promoting hormones which helps in enhancing growth and yield of plants next is azo spirulum aerobic fix living nitrogen fixing bacteria associate symbiotic bacteria live on root surface of host plant and increase crop yield supplying growth hormones and vitamins commonly used in commercial inoculation next is blue green algae no stock and anabina are common blue green algae or cyanobacteria free living and photosynthetic they fix nitrogen used in flooded rice fields 
as nitrogen biofertilizers. Next is azula. It is a water pond inside which grows nitrogen fixing BGA annabina. Azula annabina combined is used as fertilizer in all over the world. It grows in summer. Next is phosphorus solubilizing biofertilizers. Phosphorus is uh, needed for plant growth. Also for nodule formation rhizobium, certain microbes solubilize phosphorus and make it available for plants to absorb. Now we will discuss mycorrhiza, fungi that occur on roots of forest trees and crop plants in soil low in available nutrients, there is an increased absorption of nutrients by plants infected by mycorrhiza. The fungus has the ability to dissolve and absorb phosphorus that plant roots cannot readily absorb. Now come to the organic farming and its benefit. Organic matter is what? Living organisms are made of hence Organic farming in agriculture relying on crop rotation, crop residue, animal manure, legume, clean manure, organic waste and biofertilizers, mechanical cultivation, mineral bearing crops, biological paste and weed control. In other words, organic farming does not use any chemicals or artificial substance for agriculture. Agricultural product for organic farming are grain, dairy products, poultry products, cotton and jute fibers, flowers, etc. Thus, organic farming creates a sustainable lifestyle for generations to come. Now come to the method of organic farming. Nourishing microbes in soil to provide its nutrients. Soil organic matter gives the soil good structure and water holding capacity. Organic farmers grow these microbes and add compost and biological based soil nutrients so that plants grown in organic farm are disease and waste resistant. Organic farmers use crop rotation to enrich soil continuously and keep away paste prefer specific crops to keep paste away predators are used. Mating is disrupted and traps and barriers are used. Now come to the benefits of organic farming. It can be learnt easily by farmer, reduce production cost as expensive fertilizers and pesticides not used, reduces soil erosion up to 50%, increase crop yield fivefold. In low land, organic farms can support wildlife as the animal can roam in pastures and graze entire ecosystem along with groundwater is improved. Dairies benefits as the cattle are fed organic feed and grazes on organic fields. These cattle are more healthy and give tasty milk. Soil remains healthy with living microbes that provide the soil with micronutrients. Soil gets inexhaustible nutrients for many generations of crops grown in the organic field, quality of product enhanced as they are free from harmful chemicals, artificial flavors, colors and preservatives. Now come to the advantages of intense farming and organic farming. In short, advantages of intensive farming are bigger yields from land available, fewer workers needed, use of hormone increases, meat production large numbers of animals kept in ideal conditions, produced is cheaper, fewer blemishes on crops and organic farming, soil structure is better, less harmful to environment, no harmful chemicals, healthier more birds, insects and animals lead happier lives. Now come to the vermicompost. Vermicompost can be prepared at the backyard of your home. In one corner to your school field or maybe public park, which will produce manure as well as clean up the environment from garbage accumulation. 
vermicomposting efficiently recycles organic waste, crop residues and agro-industrial waste, earthworms and microbes includes bacteria and fungi together turn organic waste into useful organic manure. Now, we would like to talk about organic materials that can be required for vermicompost. It can be agriculture residue, dry organic waste, waste vegetables, soya bean residues, weeds, sugar cane trash, sericulture residue from silk production, animal manures, dairy and poultry based waste, food industry waste, municipal solid waste, biogas sludge, baggies from sugar cane factories. Now come to the steps in making vermicompost. Build or purchase worms from your vermicompost bin. Prepare the worm bedding, motion the bedding, add a handful of soil to, be, to the bedding, add the worms to the vermicompost bin, add food scraps to, bin, to the bin, remove the worms when the compost is done, harvest the vermicompost, replace the bedding and reintroduce the worms. Now, Next is integrated waste management. Farmers develop a control program that includes cultivation, biological and chemical methods applied in proper sequence with and with the proper timing. The aim of IPM is not to eradicate the waste population completely, but to keep the crop damage to economically tolerable level. Farmers monitor the field and when they find the paste label to be high enough, they first use biological methods and cultivation practices to control and then use small amounts of insecticides, mostly insecticides derived from plants as a last resort. Biological control include natural predator, parasites and pathogens of the paste are used. Examples are first paste on cucumber plant called red spider mite is controlled by using a predatory mite that fed on red spider mite. Second citrus fruit in California heavily damaged by scale insects which were controlled by Australian ladybird which are Aveda insects. Mealy bug paste of cassava plant were controlled by a parasitoid wasp which was its natural enemy. Hormones are used that disturb the insect's normal life cycle thereby preventing it from reaching maturity and reproducing and multiplying. Now come to the biotechnology in agriculture. Modern agriculture you assured in green revolution with hybrid seeds, fertilizers, pesticides and improvement in agriculture practices genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology brought in second green revolution with genetically modified GM crops or transgenic crops or GMOs. Transgenic crops have been produced with the following aims, crop resistance to herbicides, crop resistance to insects and diseases, Atmospheric nitrogen fixation by cereal crops, tolerance to high salt soil and to flooding in crops, drought resistance in crop, improving nutritional quality of crops, prolonging shelf life of fruits and vegetables. So, some important examples of transgenics or GMOs are Bt cotton produced by incorporating Bt gene with encodes for Bt toxins. In the cotton plant, the plant becomes insect resistant and this gene has been incorporated in brinjal, corn, potato, tomato, tobacco, etc., making them insect resistant. Such plants can reduce our dependence on chemical pesticides which will save us money and our environment. Golden rice are transgenic with enhanced vitamin A content reducing nutritionally rich rice to save many lives. Salt and 
flood tolerance genes have been incorporated in rice so that BT rice in China shows higher yield and, and a huge reduction in pesticides use. Such rice can be grown on saline soil. Next is by slowing down and controlling ripening in tomato by introducing a bacterial genes that prevents ethylene formation thus de delaying ripening. Such tomatoes are easy to handle during transportation and remains on the shelf for a long time. Cold damage to crop plants can be man minimized by introducing genes for antifreeze proteins found in the blood of arctic fishes. Frost resistance tomatoes has been produced by introducing genes for antifreeze proteins from polar fish living in ice water. Plant biotechnology can help to make intensive agriculture less damaging to environment as well as help the country to spend less money on fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides. Now come to benefits and controversies on GM, GM products. First we will take benefits for crops, enhance taste and quality, reduce maturation time, increase nutrients yield and stress tolerance, improve resistance to disease paste and herbicides, new products and growing techniques. Benefits for animals, increase resistance, productivity, hardness and feed efficiency, better yield of meat, eggs and milk, improved animal health and diagnostic methods for environment, friendly bioherbicides and bioinsecticides, conservation of soil, water and energy, bioprocessing for forestry products, better natural waste management, more efficient processing, benefits for society, increased food security for growing populations. Now come to the controversies for safety, potential human health impact that means allergens transfer of antibiotic resistance markers, unknown effects, potential environmental impact that is unintended transfer of transgenes through cross pollination, unknown effects on other organisms and loss of flora and fauna biodiversity. Next excess and intellectual property, domination of world food production by a few companies, increasing dependence on industrialized nations by developing countries, biopiracy that is foreign exploitation of natural resources. Now next is ethics, violation of natural organisms, intrinsic values, tempering with nature by mixing genes among species objections to transferring animal genes in plants and vice versa, stress for animals. Labeling not mandated in some countries, for example United States, mixing GM crops with non-GM confounds, labeling attempts for society, new advances may be skewed to interest of rich countries. So before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. Sustainable agriculture systems are those that are least toxic and least energy consuming yet maintain productivity and profitability. Agricultural practices like crop rotation, intercropping, polyculture and proper soil management with mulches and cover crops to maintain Soil moisture are integral part of sustainable agriculture. Biofertilizers are the plant nutrients for, of biological origin like algae, bacteria, fungi, which have no harmful effect on soil and environment. Organic farming is a type of agriculture which avoids synthetic inorganic fertilizers, pesticides, growth regulators, and livestock feed additives. Organically grown feed food products are free from harmful chemicals or typical flavors and preservatives. Vermicompost can be prepared at the backyard of your home 
in one corner of your school field or maybe in public park which will produce manure as well as clean up the environment from garbage accumulation. Integrated pest management is a grand idea to control pests and diseases. This increases production, shakes the environment from pollution and harmful effect of pesticides and save money which is usually spent on buying pesticides. Biotechnology technique is used to produce plants by gene transfer which can be a direct answer to grow plants resistance to diseases, paste, tolerant to cold, drought and flooding etc. One can design a plant to suit this condition. So, Dear learners, this is all about lesson 21 concept of sustainable agriculture. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.